Hey guys, we're back with more Cyberpunk 2077. Today we're going to be talking about how to get legendary iconic Netrunner set that you should be able to get fairly early on and majority of it is free and you can just find it in an open world. Some of them require a specific level to be able to equip the items. However, you should be able to get all of these items very early on and even though two of these items require you to finish a specific side mission, you don't actually have to fight anybody to get them. So it's very easy to get all the items on the list here. Just a reminder guys, I currently stream Cyberpunk 2077 on YouTube. So keep an eye on my social media to know when my next stream is coming up and feel free to join in and see me explore the night city. And if you end up liking the video or learning something new about the game, then hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for similar content or leave a comment below to let me know about some other things that you would like me to cover on this channel. With that out of the way, let's start with the first item on the list, which will be the legendary Netrunner pants. These will be extremely easy to pick up. They're located in this northern part of Watson. The closest fast travel point that you can use to get to the area is this perishing street waypoint right here. When you take the waypoint, what you want to do is continue straight here towards the electric tower in front and then turn left. And once you get to this location over here, you will be looking for these globe thingies on the left side that have the stairs around them. And you will skip the first one, but the second one on the left side is the one that we're interested in. So when you run up the stairs and jump over the fence, you just have to run up the stairs and on top you will find a dead net runner that has those legendary pants. Now I already picked these up in my earlier playthrough so the net runner is already gone. But if you've never looted it before, but this is the location where you can find him. When we look at the pants, this is how they look like. Unfortunately, I did not save and reload the game when I picked these up. So unfortunately, I only picked them up with only one bot slot. I would recommend you guys to save the game before you pick them up. And if you only see one bot slot on the pants, just reload your save and try your luck next time. You should at the very least be able to get two bot slots on these pants. Anyway, so these are the legendary pans that you can get. They look really, really cool. And let's move on to item number two on the list. The second part of the set will be legendary Netrunner shoes. To get those, you will have to travel to this Charter Hill area in Westbrook. The closest fast travel point that lets you get to the area is called Lele Park. And if you click on it, you get to this location right here. Now, what you want to do is to continue going down the street, following the street lights until you get to this part right here. When you look to the right, you will see this open hatch and a dead net runner laying right next to it. At this point, what I would recommend is saving the game again and making sure that if you do not find the adequate amount of mod slots in the shoes, that you can just simply reload your save, jump down and try your luck again. Just to demonstrate just how unlucky can you guys be when looting these shoes, you can see that I have zero mod slots in these boots on my first try. It took me actually three reloads to get to the point where the boots had all three mod slots. And there you go, that's the second part of Legendary Set. We got boots and pants at this point. You can obviously use any mods you want. I'm using the dead eye to increase my crit chance and the crit damage to increase the DPS output. Okay, so these two were super easy to get. Now we're gonna get to the point where we actually need to do a little bit of work to get our third item on the list. The third piece of the set are these cool net run visors that we can find all the way down here in the Badlands. I have never been to this area before, so it took me a minute to actually get here. But if you have been to this area, you can fast travel to the Tongo Tours Motel, which is one of the closer waypoints that gets you to the area. From here, you're just gonna continue going down that road all the way beyond the bend until you get to the point where you're on the right side of the road, you will find this burned down car and a dead net runner laying right next to it. The dead net runner has a transcript on them and when you pick it up and immediately read the message, it actually triggers a new job called delivery from above. Now, if you actually go and track this side mission, you will see that it's only a couple hundred meters away in the same area and you can just get there from the current location. When you continue down the road, eventually you'll get to the area where the job tracking is leading you. And at this point, I would recommend again saving the game just to make sure that you can always reload it back if you don't get the desired amount of mod slots in the item you will discover this container that I guess fell from the sky and it actually has two of the legendary Netrunner info visors. 
They both look the same and you get double the chance to actually find an info visor with three mod slots, which is the most you can get out of this one. This time I got lucky on my first try, but if you guys don't, then just reload your last save and try your luck next time. You can see that this info visor fits really, really well into our Netrunner set. And it has three mod slots, which is great for whatever build you're trying to run on your V. So now that's three out of five items in our Netrunner set. And we just have a shirt and a jacket left to acquire. The next one we're going to get is the shirt, which again is extremely easy to get. It's located in the southern part of Haywood in the Glen area right here. And the closest fast travel that you can take to get to the area is Ventura and Skyline. Once you get to this waypoint, all you need to do is to run down this street. You're going to get to the first right turn that you're going to skip and continue going down the road until you get to the point where on the right side, you'll see this entrance into this huge open area. If you haven't been to this area, you'll probably get an NCPD dispatch call. But if you've already been to this area, you might not get that one. You continue going in and you'll find this abandoned shack with some huge tubes. And what you want to do is go to the left side and cross this junk field all the way until you get to the point where there is this entry into the shack from the back. Crouch down, you walk through. Again, I would recommend saving the game right before you enter the shack. And there you go, you'll find another dead Netrunner that has our legendary Netrunner shirt. Now this one took me a few tries too, but eventually I got to the point where I found one with four mod slots, which I believe is the most that you can find on this item. Now this is where things get a little funny because this is actually an item that requires level 30 and my character is level 20 so I can't really show you guys how the item looks like. However, this suit looks very very similar to a rare net running suit I already have in my inventory and so I'm going to show you guys for the demo purposes how that one looks like. You'll see that this is actually a complete suit and if you remove the pants and the jacket, it covers your whole body. However, you can actually put pants and a jacket on it and it acts more like an undershirt. So again, the cool thing is that you can get this item very early on, but unfortunately you will have to wait until level 30 to actually be able to use it. But considering the fact that the game already came out a few weeks ago, most of you probably will be level 30 or higher, so you should all be able to grab this one for free and use it right away. Now the last piece of the Netrunner set is actually located not that far from the last location because we're going to be staying in the Glen area of Haywood. And the closest fast travel point that you might want to go to is called El Coyote Kojo right here. And when you travel to it, what you want to do is to continue walking down the street towards this question mark right here. If you haven't been to this area before, you don't really have an open gig yet. But this question mark is basically where we need to go to get a call from the fixer and start that side gig. As you can see, before you get to the entrance, we get a call from a fixer called Sebastian Padre Ibarra. And when we answer the call, he gives us a new job called Gig Psycho Fan. He's basically asking us to steal a guitar from an apartment all the way up on the top floor. And so that's where we're going to be going. Now, there are two ways to approach this mission. One of them is for the high level characters that already have a lot of points invested in their technical ability. You can see that you need 17 technical ability to be able to open the door to the apartment, which unfortunately I do not. Luckily, there's another way to actually get into this apartment. If you go to the right and then take the fire as it stairs, they will lead you up onto the rooftop. On the left side, you'll see some construction workers working and on the right side, you'll find this box with an epic upgrade components. And right next to it is this opening that we have to jump through down to the apartment. And now we're in the same apartment that we would have gotten to if we entered through the main door. You see that the back door is not locked, so you don't need any technical ability to get here. You might want to explore a little bit in this apartment. There are quite a few interaction with Johnny Silverhand. Reflecting on Johnny's singing career, which are pretty damn cool. The first big piece of armor here, aside from the Netrunner's jacket, are Johnny's pants. There is an achievement that requires you to complete the Johnny set. So these pants will be pretty handy if you're trying to get that achievement. If you walk out of the bedroom, you will get into this locked shrine. It's actually protected by a code. Now Johnny recommends a combination of 69, 69, 69. 
which sounds pretty cool, but when I tried it, it didn't really work. Surprise, surprise. So the way to look for the actual code, you have to go back to the bathroom and on the right side of the bed, you'll find this photo. When you check it out, it triggers another interaction with Johnny Silverhand and eventually he remembers that it's the date when the picture was taken. That's the code to the safe room. What you need to do here is open your scanner targeting the photo and you will see that the scanner actually tells you that the year when the picture was taken was 2065, which ends up being our code to the safe room. Now again, I would recommend to save the game before you enter the safe room, just in case you don't get the required quality of the item or if you don't get enough mod slots. When you enter the room, before you actually grab the guitar for the side gig, on the left side you'll find a box that contains the Netrunner's jacket. Now I tried to reload this save about 50 times, unfortunately I could never get a legendary version of this item even though I've seen other people actually having a legendary drop from here. This happened to me already before with few other items. I think the problem is that I'm such a low level that it will just not let me spawn a legendary version of this item because technically as a level 20 I'm probably not supposed to be here. So now you pretty much have two options. Considering the fact that the jacket actually requires you to be level 30 before you can even use it, you might as well just leave this mission alone and then come back when you're a higher level, try to save it again and then reload a few times and you should be able to get a legendary version of this jacket later on with up to four or five mod slots. Or second option if you're happy enough with an epic version of this item is to just loot it and then wear the epic version when you're level 33. Unfortunately, you're not only losing on the quality of the item, you're also losing on the number of mod slots that the item has. Because epic item will only have up to 2 mod slots, whereas legendary can have up to 4-5 to five mod slots. So really my recommendation would be just leave this item alone and then come back later on in the game when you're level 30 plus and when you can actually get the legendary version of this item. Just to give you guys an idea of how this set actually looks when it's completed, I'm using a jacket that has the same model as the Netrunner one, however obviously it has a bit of a different color palette. The Netrunner jacket is a little bit darker and fits more with the rest of the outfit. And that's it guys, I don't know about you, but I think this set looks really really cool and I'm definitely gonna be wearing when I get to level 33 plus. And that will be it for today's video, I'll thank you so much for watching and for showing support in my previous videos. And so guys, if you liked the video and did not know about this set, then go ahead and like the video, leave a comment if this was helpful, or subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.